And I hope all of you, hope all of you are doing well this morning. <coughs> hope you've had a good week. And uh, of course, you know, we've had some uh, had some birthdays. Of course, uh, Brother Donnie turning 80 today. That's just remarkable. Uh, Sister Judy and Pastor Lynn both had birthdays Wednesday. They share the same day. And uh, a smart associate knows not to uh, give their ages. So <laughs> I won't. <laughs> Anyway, just uh, thankful, thankful for all for them, and uh, as I said, thankful for all of you. You know, you're just a great congregation, and uh, you're you're hungry, you're hungry for the word. You come every Sunday to hear the word. So, this morning I'm going to be in Matthew chapter 14. <laughs> I'm going to start with verse 22. And good morning to anyone who may be watching on Facebook. Glad you're joining us this morning. Pray that my GoPro holds up. <laughs> yes. Hey, Lulu. Hey, Lulu, love you. Yeah, I know, I know she's watching. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, so, as I said, social, you can do some good on social media once in a while. <laughs> anyway. All right, Matthew chapter 14, I'm going to start with verse 22. Everybody there? Yeah. Awesome. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spoke unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. Right. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou, o thou little thing, uh -huh. wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were coming to the ship, the wind ceased. Mm -hmm. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, of a truth, yes. thou art the Son, Son of God. God. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the opportunity to gather here this morning to, to worship you and give you all the praise that you deserve. Lord, open our hearts and our ears to receive this message today. Be with me as I as I preach the message, Lord. Give me, give me the thoughts and words, and I'll preach the message the way you want to yes. preach this yes. morning, Lord. Yes. We give you all the praise in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen, amen and Amen. One of my favorite stories in the Gospels when it says that uh, when it says that Jesus constrained the disciples, and, you know, it, it, it pretty much demanded that they get in the they get in the ship and go. He was very firm. It doesn't now Matthew doesn't give the details, but when you go to John six fifteen, it, it tells you why. It's because the people. After the, after the miracle, I think this was after the, uh, the feeding of the 5,000, and, and the people, it says the people wanted to take him by force right. to make him king. So that's why he departed into a mountain himself alone. So he went to the mountain. He did this numerous times throughout the Gospels. You read in all four Gospels that Jesus was... He would go alone. He would go apart from everybody else and pray, usually up on the mountain. And I've wondered, maybe you've wondered too, you know, what what did Jesus pray when he went up to the mountains? You know, what what did he say? You know, this, uh, you, know, you know, there's not much that, I mean, sometimes you read what he actually prayed. You read in the, in, in the book of John, you know, you read his prayer. You know, he didn't have to, uh, he didn't have to ask forgiveness like we do. He didn't have to ask for forgiveness for sin because he was without sin. Amen. You know, he didn't have to repent. 
But more than likely, he prayed for his disciples. You know, he, you know, he told Peter that he had, he had prayed for him because Satan wanted to sift him like wheat. So he prayed that his faith would not fail. And I'm sure Jesus prayed for all the disciples. He prayed that for all the disciples, that their faith would not fail. But whatever the case was that evening, he prayed and stayed up there quite a while. Meanwhile, the disciples, they're rowing and uh, the, the trip should have taken maybe an hour, hour and a half tops. You know, it wasn't, wasn't very, very long they had to row, but, you know, they come up across the wind and uh, it says they were tossed with waves, so there was, so there was turbulence. You know, even you know Jesus. You know, when Jesus first sent them out, maybe the sea was calm. You know, maybe it was calm. Maybe there was maybe, maybe just a slight breeze. You know, okay, we'll be over, we'll be over there, and we'll make good time. But that was not the case that evening. And you know, in, the, in our Christian walk, you know, we, you know, Jesus sends us out to spread the gospel, and uh, you know, we get born again, and well, you know, we, we feel good inside. We feel the, you know, we feel the Holy Spirit within us, and and some, you know, and maybe it, you get sometimes when you get that feeling that well, you know, man, everything's just going to be cheery from now on. You know, everything's going to be a, every day is going to be a, you know, a bed of roses, and and we find out that no, there is there is turbulence in our ball. You know, we have days that we have those storms. You know, we have that turbulence, and and you know we're. Seems like you know you see what's the old, you know you take one step forward you, you you take two steps back you know you just don't seem to be making don't seem to be making any headway and this was the disciples' case you know they're they're rowing they're rowing but they they can't get it because Jesus sent them he told them you know go to the other side so they were doing it for their master they were doing it for Jesus and you know. As I said, you know, we have our turbulence. You know, we, you know, we go out, live the Christian life. We try to witness. We preach the gospel. But, you know, Peter said in 1 Peter, that, that think it, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. And Jesus even told, he even told the disciples in John 16 that, you know, you're going to have tribulation in this world. But, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So no matter what we face, no matter what storms and uh, what turbulence we face, we know we know that Jesus is there. And it says that <clears throat> Jesus started going out to them in the fourth watch. They divided the night into four watches, and the fourth watch was the last watch. This is from between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., so very, very, very uh, early in the morning and, you know, before sunrise. <clears throat> so it's dark. It's dark out there. Uh, you know, maybe maybe the moon is out. Who knows? <coughs> Even the moon only gives so much light. So the disciples, they're, they're in the boat. They're rolling, fighting this wind, fighting this turbulence. And then they see, they see something in the distance. And it's like they see... They see a figure walking on the water. Mm -hmm. And they were afraid. I probably would have been too. You know, you see something in the night, you see, you know, you see, because you can't walk on water. Water is not solid. Now, I walked on water once recently, back in February. <coughs> During the ice storm, so yeah, it was frozen water. But it wasn't this deep. No, it wasn't that deep. But by walking, I walked. Yeah, I walked, and then one one second, one second I was vertical. The next second, whoop, I was horizontal. And I was at work when this happened. I mean, I was just starting the day. It's like maybe I should just go home now. <laughs> but anyway. Ordinarily, humans cannot walk on water. So when they see this, they think it's a ghost. They think it's a spirit. They had, and there was this, you know, this, this legend that, you know, that when they saw something, it was probably uh, a fisherman or a captain that had, that had died on the sea, you know, and, and when, so this figure was coming to warn them that they're in great peril. Maybe they were going to meet the same fate. 
So they're thinking, they're probably thinking this in their head, and they're afraid, but then they hear that reassuring word. It is I. Be not afraid. It is I who's walking on the water. It's I who is coming to you. You know, we had a little uh, uh, a foreshadowing of this, if you will, back in Job, in the book of Job, in chapter 9, verse 8. You know, he uh, Job is saying, <clears throat> talking about the Lord, he spreads out the heavens and treads upon the waves of the sea. So, so, so even Job, he knew he knew the power of the Lord and what the Lord could do. There was nothing that the Lord could not do. So once Jesus tells them that it's him, Peter's like, Lord, if it's you, then bid me come out to you. And really, when, when you read it, if you translate it, he's actually saying, since it is you, since it is you, Lord, let me come out there. Now you can look at it and think, well, Peter was being rash. He was being impulsive. He was being a little bit selfish. Because he wanted to go out there. He didn't, he didn't say, you know, hey, let us. Let us come out there. No, let, let me come out there. So maybe, but really, had, I mean, you had to know, when you read the gospel, you know how Peter is. Yes, he's, he's a little rash sometimes. But he loved the Lord. He wanted to be near the Lord. It was Peter who was given the revelation that Jesus was the Christ. It was revealed to him by the Father. You know, you read when you read the when you read the Gospel of John, when you read towards the end, you know, when they're out fishing and Jesus is on the shore waiting for them, as soon as Peter knew it was as soon as Peter knew it was Jesus, it said he jumps out of the boat and swims. Swims to them. Swims to him. He wasn't waiting for the boat to roll in with the heavy with the, all the fish in the net. Slowing them down. He's swimming. Couldn't wait to be near the Lord. And so it was here. He wasn't going to wait for Jesus to walk to the boat. He wanted to be out there where Jesus was. So Jesus told him to come. And Peter starts walking on the water. He's, he's walking just like I'm walking here on the, on the platform this morning. Walking out to him. Everything's, everything's great. Everything's groovy. Yeah. But then, he took his eyes off Jesus. He noticed, he noticed the winds. Yeah. Noticed the waves crashing against each other. And he got that sinking feeling, literally. Felt himself starting to sink because his because his faith had wavered just a little. But as soon as he began to sink, he cried out to the Lord. He said, Lord, help me. Save me. And notice what it says. It says, immediately. Immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand. Jesus didn't chastise Peter. He didn't just like. Watch him sink. Watch him struggle. Like, well, Peter, you really messed up, didn't you? You know, you know, you could have just kept on coming to me. You just had to, just, just had to waver, didn't you? What was that? I, I can't hear you when you're in the water, Peter. No, he didn't. He didn't do that. As soon as Peter cried out for him, he was there. That's right. With his help, right. with his outstretched hand. That's right. And so it is when we cry out to him. That's right. Jesus reaches out his hand to us. Right. None of us have been perfect in our Christian walk. That's right. We falter, we fail. We mess up. But when, even when we doubt, 
right, that least little bit. When we focus, when we focus on our tribulation a little too much, if we cry out, He's there. Right. You know, at least Peter got out of the boat. The other disciples are just sitting there, watching, huddling, you know, waiting, waiting for that storm, you know, to pass. Hoping it'll be better once Jesus gets in the boat. You know, when you're going through something, you can, yeah, you can just sit there, you can feel sorry for yourself. You can sit there and cry. And let stress get the best of you. And what am I going to do? Maybe the Lord will do something. Well, there's no maybe to it. He'll just get up, get out of that boat, and go to Him. You don't have to wait. Don't wait for him to come to you. You go to him. Yeah. It's not an easy walk sometimes. Yeah, the Satan's still, you know, Satan's still gonna be there. He's gonna be there on your left or on your right, or even behind you. You know, he's gonna be cranking up, he's gonna be cranking up that storm. As soon as you're reaching out to Jesus, he's cranking up that storm even more. Trying to take your mind off Jesus. You know, you're, you, you, you're trying, you're trying, trying to ignore it, you know, but, but sometimes you just kind of like, you just, you just kind of like, you just give little side glances like, uh, it, it's still there, it's still there, you know. And then like Peter, you're like, whoo! Yeah. I remember years ago, I taking swimming lessons at the school I was going to. And we were out there swimming. And it was, uh, I think it was the weekend. Went out there to swim and my instructor was out there too. And uh, I went to the diving board and I, I, I would jump off, I can't dive, so I just, I just jump off. Thinking, okay, you know, I got, I got this, I can do this. Because in, in when I was learning, you know, the instructor would be like right there. I mean, I jump in the water and he's right there within a, within a hand's reach, you know. So I thought, okay, well, I can do this. Well, he was off a little ways. So I jump in the water and and I panic because I was in the deep end. I've you know, never been in the deep end by myself. And instead of, instead of like thinking, okay, do this stroke, do that stroke, I start, I start flailing my arms around like a madman. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you know, water's getting in my mouth. Well, next thing I know, there's that hand. That's the instructor, he was there. There, there was his hand pulling me to safety, pulling me to the side, pulling me to the ladder so I could get out and get back into the shallow end where I belong. But yeah, sometimes we, you know, our troubles can be, you know, seems like we get in so deep. And it just seems hopeless. But if we just remember, we just remember to reach out, to just reach out to Jesus. To just step out of the boat. And when you read the end of the passage, and after he rescued Peter, they got to the boat. You know, Peter, so Peter had to walk back to the boat. So again, he's walking on the water. As I said, the Lord didn't just totally chastise him and just make him thrash in the water or try to swim back to the boat. Peter could swim, but in that condition, it's probably very difficult to swim. 
with the waves the way they were, the wind. So Peter was able to walk back to the boat with Jesus. And as soon as they stepped in the boat, the wind ceased. <clears throat> the wind stopped. And then in verse 33, the disciples, those that were in the ship, they came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Now, when you read this in, uh, in the Gospel of Mark, it says in Mark 6, verse 51, that they were sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wondered. For they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. The meaning, meaning that they... Yes, they had, just, they had seen the miracle he had just done, feeding the 5,000 with five loaves and two fish, seen this supernatural event, and yet, it, and yet it wasn't registering with them that he could do so much more, that his power was unlimited. When, when, they were in the, when Jesus was in the boat with them, I forget what chapter, I didn't mark it, but earlier in, in the Gospel of Matthew, you read there in the boat, Jesus is asleep in the boat. And a storm comes up. And they freak out. They're like, hey, don't you care? We're going to die. We're going to perish. And he called the storm. And in that instance, they said, what manner of man is this? What manner of man is this? And then, but in this instant, when he walked to them on the water, they realized, okay, he's more than a man, he's more than a prophet. There is There's nothing he can't do. Right, man. You are the Son of God. They realized, maybe they recalled the revelation that Peter had, that you are the Christ. And it finally registered with them. It sunk in. You know what? You know, as a child, you know, I, yeah, I knew there was a trinity, you know, and I know there's God the Father, there's Jesus the Son, there's the Holy Spirit, you know, and, uh, and a lot of times my focus was on God the Father. You know, I didn't quite, I didn't quite grasp as a child that, that Jesus was God too. Right. Yeah. He was, yes, he was fully man. But he was fully God. <laughs> took me a while. Took a while to register with me that the Trinity, yes, three persons, but one God. Right. One God. But there was nothing that Jesus could not do because he was. He is God. Has all the power that God, that God the Father. Has. So this morning I just want to encourage you. When you're going through that trial, when you're going through that tribulation, when you're going through that storm, <clears throat> You know, the, that storm's just rocking your boat, so to say. You can try to ride it out. You can just sit there and try to ride it out. 
We can ask the Lord, Lord, let me come to you. Amen. I want to come to you. Chris, sing it this morning. Turn your eyes on Jesus. That's right. Turn your eyes on Jesus. You'll never be the same. <laughs> Yes, it is hard. Even, even, <coughs> even your associate, you know, I've had trouble keeping my eyes straightly on Jesus before. Sure. But when you do, those problems just don't seem as bad. Amen. You know. I've told you this story before. You know, during Harvey, you know, we, you know, we had a little damage, not as much as some. But looking at repairs, wondering where the money was going to come from, you know, so we're kind of stressing over that. But I went to the Lord. He didn't answer right away. Just as in our story, Jesus didn't go right out when the storm first started. He waited a few hours. Let all human hope pretty much vanish. Because if he, if he had calmed the storm right away or made it a little easier for him to row, then maybe the apostles would have thought, well, okay, hey, we did this. No, he wanted them to know. So I had to keep, I had to keep my eyes on Jesus. I had to keep my eyes on him and his promises and his power. And it was, you know, I can't remember how many months later it was. We finally got the answer. Finally got, finally got the funds. When Linda called me, I was at work. I was in my truck, driving down the road. I had to pull over. <laughs> I just started crying. Yeah. I was just so thankful. Because I reached out. Because I reached out to Jesus. Because I went to Jesus. Yeah. He answered. He answered my cry. That's right. And there have been other times, you know, I went to Jesus and maybe I faltered just a little bit. And I had to cry out just like Peter did. Lord, help me. Save me. And he was there. He's there. He's here. He's here today. He's here this morning. So thankful that he is. So whatever you're going through, if you're going through something this morning, if you have a, if you, if you have turbulence in your life this morning, you know, if you're if your boat's getting tossed with the waves, go to the Lord. Go to Jesus this morning. That's right. Don't just sit in the boat. Amen. Get out of the boat. Go to Jesus. Amen. He's there for you. See it. Even if you, even if you, even if you falter a little bit, he'll be there. Right. He'll be there. Right. To pick you up. Aren't you thankful? Yes. Yes. Aren't you thankful for Jesus and Amen. all He's done? Hallelujah. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you once again for your love and your mercy. Thank you that you're there for us, Lord. Even when we've doubted, you've been there for us, Lord. Lord, I just pray that Anybody here, anybody watching, if they're going through a trial or a storm, that's right. that they would get out of the boat this morning and come to you. Pray that they would turn their eyes to you. Yes. Well, Lord, I pray that you would give us patience. 
Just as he made the disciples wait a little bit. So if we don't get the answer right away, just let us persevere. Give us, give us patience, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being there. Pray that they'll just, pray they'll just come to you, Lord. And we thank you. We give you all the glory and all the praise this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray again. Amen. Offers are open if you, you need to come to the Lord this morning. You need him to call next door.
tonight, Terry Green at 6 o'clock. And keep Kim in prayer. Kim, come down here, darling. We'll pray for you. I, I told her we'd pray for her this morning. She's been having a, quite a lot of fatigue and fighting. 